hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel and i hope all of you are doing great uh, so this is the part 3 of the video series that i have started uh, encyclopedia of chart patterns and today we are going to discuss the chart pattern and it is its name is head and shoulders pattern uh, i have already discussed about two patterns one is uh, in past part first i have discussed about the horizontal or the rectangle pattern and in part 2 I have discussed about the cup and handle pattern and in the third part of this video we are going to take a look at the head and shoulders pattern if you haven't seen those videos uh, do check them out in the video series of the encyclopedia of chart patterns I will uh, give the link of that playlist in the description or maybe you can check it on this i button in the top right corner uh, so let's get started with the video before starting the video standard disclaimer i'm not a sebi registered analyst and any stock discussed here is not a buy or sell recommendation please consult your financial advisor before making any trade or, or making any investment so let's get started with the video uh, so a typical head and shoulders pattern uh, forms when a stock in a prior uptrend rises to a peak and then declines and takes support at a point uh, so let's suppose <coughs> take a look at this diagram uh, so this is a stock suppose it's in in an uptrend as you can see here it is going up and down up and down like this and one day it uh, for, uh, rises to a peak and then suddenly starts declining and after a small decline maybe a 10 15 percent or maybe 10 12 percent decline uh, it forms a kind of a base small base and then again starts rising and as you see it crosses the previous uh, peak that it formed and uh, at that time you will be thinking that uh, it is continuing its support journey and that was uh, this was a, a normal break uh, or maybe the pullback that we call and then stocks again starts rising and forms another peak but suddenly after forming another peak the stock starts declining and this time also uh, if you remember it took support at a certain point and again that stock takes support at that point after uh, so initially the stock was in an uptrend as you can see here and then it started declining uh, it took support and then again started climbing and then formed another peak and then again starts declining and take support at the same level that it took support the during the previous pullback uh, so let me remove these markings yeah so the stop was rising in a, in an uptrend and then a pullback takes support and then again starts rising crosses the previous peak uh, forms another peak and again starts declining this time also takes the support at the previous level and again starts declining but as you uh, will see during the third peak it doesn't uh, gain back that level that it reached the during the previous peak and it starts declining like this and this time instead of taking support at that level it breaks down so this is what your typical head and shoulder patterns look like uh, let's read this here uh, so the head and shoulder pattern shoulder pattern forms when a stock in a prior uptrend rises to a peak and then declines and takes support at one point as you can see here rising in an uptrend declines takes support at a point then from that point it again starts rising and crosses the previous peak but soon after starts declining as you can see here after taking support at this level it again starts rising and forms another peak above the pre uh, above the previous peak uh, so this is important during the formation of head and shoulder pattern uh, the middle peak should be the higher than the other two peaks as you can see here this the middle peak should be higher in, than the previous peak and the next peak and then again takes support at the point it took previously as you can see here it took support at this point and after another decline again takes support at this point now it forms a third peak but fails to reach the previous point that was this higher level and again starts declining and this time it doesn't take support at the uh, the support level that we had here uh, at which it took support during the previous two declines and it breaks so this support that we have here let me remove the markings 
yes yeah, so the support we have here this line from where it bounced back two times this is what we call as neckline this is known as the neckline of the head and shoulder pattern and once the stock breaks this neckline it is qualified as a head and shoulder pattern unless there is a breakout uh, a pattern is never completed till then it's only our anticipation that it is forming a head and shoulder or, or a cup and handle or any pattern unless it gives a clear breakout or a breakdown uh, till then the pattern is not completed and till then we are only anticipating that it is a pattern so i hope you have understood the basic of this head and shoulder pattern uh, so what does a head and shoulder pattern tell you uh, like all charting patterns, the up and downs of the head and shoulder pattern tells a very specific story behind the battle going waged between bulls and bears. So like any other pattern, uh, every pattern has a meaning. So similarly, this head and shoulder patterns tells the story about the battle between the bulls and, and the bears. <coughs> so the initial peak, uh, the first point, this, this is our initial peak. So the initial peak and subsequent decline represent the waning of momentum of the prior bullish trend. So if you remember, so if you remember, as I said, a stock should be in an prior uptrend uh, during the formation of this pattern, as you can see here, during uh, prior uptrend, and then forms a peak and then starts declining. So that is the first first sign of warning that the bullish momentum is fading away. Uh, after the decline the bulls rally to push the price back up the past initial peak to reach a new high so as you can see here again bulls take control of the stock and pushes the price higher than the previous peak and forms another peak uh, but this time also it again starts declining as you can see however uh, once the price uh, price declines and reaches a point below the initial peak uh, it is clear that the bears are gaining ground as you can see here after this in uh, this su subsequent peak uh, this was our initial peak and then uh, it went down and, and again again start to drive zing and second time also bears take control although bulls tried to push the market higher uh, but bears took the control of the stock as you can see here of initial peak and then a decline and then during the second uh, it crossed the initial peak and forms and the higher peak and but again the bears take the grip and it again starts declining but bulls try one more time to push the price upward but succeed only in hitting the lesser high reached in the initial peak so third time also bulls try to take the market away from the bears but they failed to reach the this middle peak that we formed and uh, as uh, they reached as high as this the initial peak so they failed to cross the middle peak that was the head and that was this after initial decline but the peak that was formed after the initial decline they fa failed to reach that peak and the price starts declining uh, this failure to surpass the highest level signals the bulls defeat and bears take over driving the price down and completing the reversal so as you can see here once uh, during after the third decline it breaks the neckline and the bears take full control and the stocks start declining uh, so there are two types of pattern usually uh, this uh, head and shoulder pattern is assumed to be a reversal pattern but it is also a continuation pattern i will explain how so there are two types of pattern a continue uh, there is a continuation pattern and a reversal pattern so a continuation pattern can be thought as a pause during a prevailing uptrend uh, it is the time of uh, break where the bears catch the uh, sorry bulls catch their breath during an uptrend so a stock is in a, an uptrend and as you know there are different phases of market like the, there is an uptrend and then there is an accumulation phase and then there is an downtrend so during an uptrend when the stock 
uh, takes a break and just consolidate in a small range that time is uh, known as the consolidation uh, or the accumulation as you can see uh, as you call it the accumulation or the uh, the second stage of the market the accumulation or i forgot its name sorry for that uh, so while a uh, price pattern is forming there is no way to tell if the trend will reverse or continue so after an uptrend when the price starts just consolidating in a range there is no way to tell if it is going to reverse or it is going to go up again uh, unless we get a breakout or a breakdown so there is no way of telling if the stock is going to up, go up or going to go down it is going to go down uh, unless there is a breakout or a breakdown uh, during the pattern formation uh, we can only anticipate there is nothing compulsory in general the longer the price takes to develop and the larger the price movement within the pattern the more significant the move once the price breaks above or below the area of continuation so the bigger the pattern uh, this during the consolidation or the accumulation the bigger the pattern uh, the bigger can uh, will be the move after a breakout or a breakdown so during the con uh, so during the continuation uh, so what are continuation patterns they are, they just act as a pause or a breathing area for bulls like a stock is in an uptrend and then it consolidates and then again breaks on the upper side and continues the move so continuation patterns are or maybe during the downtrend also a stock is in a downtrend uh, a breather for the bears consolidate and then again starts heading lower so it could be a bullish trend or it could be a bearish trend and the pause in between is known as the continuation and the patterns that are formed during that pause are known as continuation patterns for example uh, our triangle is a continuation pattern pennant uh, very similar to triangle uh, flags are cons uh, consolidation or the continue continuation pattern a flag is typically like this a stock is in uptrend and then it consolidate in a horizontal range or maybe a declining range like this uh, in a parallel channel and then breaks out and again starts heading higher or maybe a stock in a downtrend and uh, goes up a little bit consolidates and then again starts heading lower so that uh, are your flags uh, channel channel is also very similar to flag without uh, just in a range it could be downward it could be upward or it could be a parallel straight channel so the price just takes a pause during that channel formation it is very similar to your rectangle pattern uh, and then we have uh, cup and handle that i explained in the last video which is a continuation pattern and then we have rectangle rectangles also uh, could be bullish or bearish uh, it just cons uh, the price is consolidate in a range i have explained in great detail in the first video and the second type of patterns that we have are the reversal pattern so a pattern a price pattern that signals a change in the prevailing trend is known as a reversal pattern so what does this mean is a uh, stock is in an uptrend uh, and it starts consolidating in a range let's say it starts forming a rectangle pattern and this time instead of breaking on the upside it breaks on the downside and the downtrend starts after the formation of that pattern so it reversed the trend the prior trend was uptrend then a consolidation and then it breaks down and goes for a downtrend similarly uh, it could be bullish or bullish reversal also like a uh, stock is in a downtrend consolidates in a range maybe form a cup and handle pattern and then breaks on the upper side so it reversed the price the prior trend was downtrend and then it consolidated and formed a cup and handle pattern and then starts uh, starts heading higher so these patterns signify periods where either the bulls or the bears have run out of steam so uh, in an uptrend when the bulls are uh, bulls have ran out of steam uh, and then a stock goes in a consolidation and it breaks on the down, downside so the bears have taken the control of that stock
so that signals the trend change so reversal uh, that occurs at market tops are known as distribution patterns and the reversal that occur at the market bottom are known as accumulation pattern uh, these are the prime examples of the reversal pattern uh, the one we are studying right now so uh, head and shoulder then we have double top and double bottom uh, this is your double top and this is your double bottom uh, double top is formed after a subsequent uptrend and double do uh, double bottom is formed after a downtrend similarly the triple top and triple bottom are uh, very similar and the rising wedge is a bearish pattern uh, it forms during an uptrend uh, it is very similar to a triangle uh, it is like this a stock is in an uptrend and then uh, it start consolidating and the range gets smaller and smaller and it breaks on the down downside similarly the falling wedge is like this a uh, triangle that gets narrower uh, stock is in prior down, downtrend and it starts consolidating and the range gets tighter and tighter and it breaks on the upper side so these are your examples of a reversal pattern so about the head and shoulder many people believe it is a reversal pattern although it is a reversal pattern but it is also a consolidation pattern it is not just a reversal pattern it is a consolidation pattern also so this is your head and sh shoulder top which is a reversal pattern because it is formed after a, a bull run uh, a stock is in an uptrend and it is formed on the top so this is the, your head and shoulder top is your reversal pattern so it is a reversal pattern uh, what are the main points about uh, it the prior trend should be up the size of the head should be higher than the that of the shoulders that is a given unless the height of the head is higher than the shoulders then it is not a head and shoulder pattern one thing to notice about uh, during the formation of this head and shoulder pattern the volume should decline during the head formation as we move from the left to right and increase during the neckline break breakout so wait a second let me remove all these markings so as you can see here in this diagram uh, during the formation the stock is in an uptrend and then again as i explained to you uh, before your initial peak is formed it starts coming down takes uh, uh, support at a level and then again starts heading higher forms the head uh, that is the higher than the previous uh, initial peak then again come down take support at that level or maybe a little bit up and down it works doesn't matter much and again starts heading higher but fail to cross the middle peak that was our head and soon starts declining so during the formation of this whole left shoulder and the head uh, the volume should start declining as you can see here the volume was high during an uptrend and during this formation and during this pullback volume should go down and again uh, during this formation of this head uh, volume should uh, go up a little bit but it should be lower than the previous uh, during the initial peak formation and uh, as we move from left side to as we move from left side to right side it should start declining and during the neckline breakdown uh, it should increase suddenly so these are the main characteristics or the things you should look for during the formation of a head and shoulder top pattern so head and shoulder top is your reversal pattern uh, then we have inverse head and shoulder it is a con uh, continuation pattern so what does an inverse head and shoulder look like so this is your typical inverse head and shoulder uh, the prior trend is up and it it goes down uh, gives a normal pullback that is very common in the bull market or during the uptrend uh, small small pullbacks are uh, very common and then again goes up faces a resistance at a level and then again come down and breaks the previous support that was our first initial peak on the downside and it breaks that support and again comes down and forms uh, another support and again starts going up again faces the resistance and comes down for a third second but doesn't go as low as the middle peak that was the head formation and again starts going up but this time breaks the resistance level and again starts going up uh, a retest is also important it gives uh, uh, like indication that the bulls are now in total control and all the bears that were left are now gone and the stock is in a 
strong hand so unlike the head and shoulder top your inverse head and shoulder is a continuation pattern it is formed during the accumulation phase uh, when a stock is taking a break during an uptrend or maybe a, uh, during a downtrend <coughs> it takes break and it forms an inverse head and shoulder as the name suggests inverse upside down and it breaks on the upper side instead of the lower side and then the uh, trend continues uh, bullish trend uh, so volume in this case also as we move from left to right from left shoulder to right shoulder the volume should decrease and during the breakout uh, when we break the resistance level the volume should suddenly increase and during the retest it should again come down and with the uh, prior uh, with the next move it should go up so this is what your inverse head and shoulder look like uh, most people uh, as i said previously that most people believe that uh, uh, head and shoulders is only a reversal pattern that forms after a uptrend or a downtrend uh, but two great traders uh, sir edward and sir maggie in their book called the technical analysis of stock trends uh, it is a great book they have written uh, it in 1948 uh, everyone who is interested in technical analysis or me especially the chart should read this book have explained how uh, hs uh, head and shoulder which is head and shoulder works as a continuation pattern also uh, so this is example from their book uh, this is anaconda copper in 1936 and as you can see here what i explained you here the stock was in an uptrend uh, then a decline then a further decline but third time it doesn't decline as much as the middle peak and then breaks out on the upper side and continues the prior trend so this is what your inverse head and shoulders look like so this is your typical head and shoulder top pattern as you can see here the stock was in an uptrend and then a small peak a decline take support at this level uh, again starts going up uh, uh, crosses this level of the initial peak and forms another peak and again starts coming down and third as you can see here again but this time also it fails to reach this level that was our middle peak uh, wait a second let me remove the markings uh, so let me explain it again simple the stock was in an uptrend uh, it forms peak declines forms another peak which is higher than the initial peak then again starts declining forms a peak for the third time but it is not as high as high as the middle peak and then it breaks the neckline as you can see here and then goes down uh, look at the size of the candle after the breakdown of this neckline look at the size of the candle this is what your typical this is a very good example of head and shoulder top it is a literally a perfect example of head and shoulder top as you can see here oh so there is something called complex head and shoulder which thomas boski uh, sorry i if i pr pronounce the name wrong sorry for that so thomas boski was one legendary trader who in his book with whose uh, its name is encyclopedia of chart patterns that is the name uh, of the book from where i have taken the name of this series uh, explained that uh, complex head and shoulder uh, your head and shoulder is not but uh, like uh, many people really, uh, believe that the head and shoulder has only two shoulders and one head as you can see here in this example and in this example also and in our previous example also uh, one left shoulder one right shoulder and a head but uh, thomas so thomas also uh, noticed one thing that uh, head and shoulder can uh, head and shoulder can have more than one shoulder uh, so as you can see here this example we have two left shoulders and two right shoulders and this still qualify as a head and shoulder pattern although such patterns are very rare to find but i found a recent example as you can see here this is the chart of the dalmia bharat and this is the perfect example of complex head and shoulder see the prior uptrend uh, first initial peak stock comes down 
and then forms another peak which is higher than the initial peak comes down forms another peak and then another and then again uh, as you can see here in this example it has formed one left shoulder and three right shoulders so this is your a uh, very clean example of a uh, complex head and shoulder as you can see here one left shoulder head one two and three right shoulders then a breakdown at the end as you can see after that what happened look at the volume look at the volume activity during this formation volume was down and during the uh, breakdown it again it suddenly starts going up so this is the example of complex head and shoulder pattern so let's uh, take a look at some few uh, real time example so this is the chart i showed you uh, before this is another example of inverse this is the example of inverse head and shoulder that is a continuation pattern as you can see here uh, the stock is in an uptrend it starts coming down forms initial peak and uh, not the peak initial bottom and then a bottom which is lower than the previous one and then another and then it gives a, a breakout of this resistance zone and starts going up uh, so let me remove this marking so how do we calculate the target uh, so the target uh, the target calculation of this is uh, pretty simple as you can see here we just have to calculate the height of the head from the resistance level and that is what your uh, this wait a second this that is what your pattern uh, sorry target price looks like vertical height of the head from the resistance uh, this is another example of inverse head and shoulder pattern as you can see here the stock is in an uptrend goes down and then a <coughs> big dip and then a smaller dip as you can see here and now uh, trying to break the resistance this is another example of a uh, very good example of this inverse head and shoulder pattern as you can see here the stock was in uptrend a uh, dip a bigger dip and again a dip so this is the typical example of although this time it failed to uh, reach the target price uh, because it is not necessary the stock will reach the target price but uh, we have to calculate the target price as you can see here in some cases it reaches as you can see this is a typical example of your uh, head and shoulder continuation this time it is example of a continuation bearish continuation as you can see the stock was already in a downtrend and then it forms a peak and then another peak and then another peak and gives the neckline breakout and this time it reached the target and how did we calculate the target just like i said uh, the height of the head from the resistance level that is your target price as you can see here that is one one three four wait a second uh, but do, uh, on the downside we calculate the target uh, the percentage target and on the upside uh, we take the number as you can see here uh, although this decline was 132 rupees uh, but it was 20 percent and when the stock goes down uh, as you increase increase the number uh, like if you take a target in numbers as you can see here uh, then it would be kind of very irrational because the target price would be uh, very large as you can see here in this case if we took the this 132 then the stock but then the tri uh, target price would have come around like 1370 or 380 around something so on the downside we take the percentage as the target price and on the upside uh, we take the we, we take the absolute value so this is another example of head and shoulder inverse head and shoulder continuation as you can see here uh, first shoulder left shoulder then a head and then the right shoulder and now it's continuing its upward journey as you can see here so this is all about the head and shoulder today we learned about the head and shoulder pattern uh, it's different formations head and shoulder top inverse head and shoulder complex head and shoulder and we also learned about the reversal patterns and the continuation patterns so this is it for today 
uh, if you learned something and enjoyed the video do consider hitting the like button it gives me motivation and do comment if you have any suggestions and don't forget to subscribe and share please 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 do subscribe and share this with your friend so they can learn about this oh so that's it goodbye take care